And Samuel was a man that was the last and the first in his category. Samuel was the last of the judges and the first of the prophets. We have this spring been looking at the book of Judges, the book of Ruth, and different men of the Old Testament. And we have learned that there was a time for about 400 years that the judges ruled. And the key verse of the book of Judges was, every man did that which was right in their own eyes. Now, there was a cycle. They would start off right with God. They begin to slide away and backslide. Then they would go into sin and follow other idols. Then God would punish them. They would cry out to God for relief. They would repent. God would bring them back. And then that cycle happened again and happened again and happened again. The men who delivered them were called judges. They were godly men of, of, of old who would uh, go to battle or call the people to repentance or whatever and he bring them back. Samuel will be the last of the judges. After Samuel you would have God's prophets prophesying and Israel would have a king. At the Toward the middle of Samuel's life, Samuel will anoint Saul as king. And Saul would become the first king of Israel. We also know that Samuel will anoint David as king as he would be the second king of Israel. So in Samuel's life, he had a godly mother and a godly father who was barren, and she prayed to God, and God gave her a boy, and she gave that boy to the temple for worship. And after a while, that little boy grew up to be the prophet Samuel, the judge Samuel. During this time, the people of God were in their disobedient stage. They were not being obedient to God. And during this time, the Philistines were the people that God was using to judge and discipline his children. And so, as the Philistines were judging them, one day, the Israelites got this brilliant idea of their own, and they said, let's get the Ark of the Covenant, and let's put it in the front lines. Now, God didn't tell us to do that, but we think it might be a good idea for us to do that. And so they took the Ark of the Covenant, and they put it in the front lines with God, without God's approval, and the Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant and returned it back to the land of the Philistines. Now, I'm not going to get into too deep and too much into the woods, except to stay. They kept the Ark of the Covenant with their other gods that they worshipped. And the funny story would be that the other gods had their mouths and hands and everything else broken off to show that God was God and their idols weren't. So, they gave the Ark of the Covenant back. They said, hey, this is more trouble than it's worth. We like to collect gods and put them in our God temple, but your God tends to create a problem for the rest of our gods, so we're going to give them back to you. So they gave them back to the to the Israelites, and the Israelites had them 
and they had their ark back and they set up a, a, the correct way to keep the ark and everything else. But then the Philistines were about to attack again. And if you turn to 1 Samuel chapter 7, you will see what happens and why we have a rock in front of us. And this rock is our Ebenezer rock. And I'll explain to you what that means in a moment. But whenever we think of Ebenezer, I always think of the Christmas Carol and Charles Dickens and Ebenezer Scrooge. But let me just tell you, this is not Ebenezer Scrooge. This is an Ebenezer that means something totally different. So, in verse number one of chapter seven, so the people of Kirith Jerim came for an ark of the Lord and took it to Abimadad's house on the hill. They consecrated his son Eliezer to take care of it. Verse 2, time went until 20 years had passed since the ark had been taken to Kirith Jerim. And the whole house of Israel longed for the Lord. Samuel told them, if you are returning to the Lord with all your heart, Get rid of the foreign gods and the Athros that are among you. Set your hearts on the Lord. Worship him, only him. Then he will rescue you from the Philistines. So the Israelites removed the Baals and the Athros and worshiped the Lord. Samuel said, gather all Israel at Mizpah, and I will pray the Lord on your behalf. When he gathered at Mizpah, they drew water poured it in the Lord's presence, for they had fasted that day, and they confessed. We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the Israelites at Mizpah. Verse 7, when the Philistines heard the Israelites had gathered at Mizpah, the rulers marched up toward Israel. When the Israelites heard about it, they were afraid because of the Philistines. The Israelites said to Samuel, don't stop crying out to the Lord our God for us so that he will save us from the Philistines. Then Samuel took a young lamb, offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. He cried out to the Lord on behalf of Israel and the Lord answered him. Verse 10, Samuel was offering the burnt offering as the Philistines approached to fight Israel. The Lord thundered loudly against the Philistines that day and threw them in such confusion they were defeated by Israel. Then the men of Israel charged out to Mizpah, pursued the Philistines, striking them down all the way to a place called Bethkar. Afterward, Samuel took a stone, set it upright between Mizpah and Shen, and he named it Ebenezer, explaining, the Lord has helped us to this point. So the Philistines were subdued and did not invade Israel's territory again. The Lord's hand was against the Philistines of all of Samuel's life. The cities from Ekron to Gath had taken from Israel were restored. Israel even rescued their surrounding territories from Philistine control. And there was also peace between Israel and the Amorites. Samuel judged Israel through his life. Every year he'd go to the circuit, Bethel, Gilgal, Mithpah, and would judge Israel in all those locations. Then he would return home to Ramah because his home was there. And he judged Israel there and built an altar to the Lord there. First thing they did was they had to seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in verses 3 through 17. They sought the Lord. And what does that mean to seek the Lord? They had to put away their false gods. The cycle of the judges were in full effect. The Philistines were disciplining them because they had fallen away from God. But in verses 5 and 6, the Bible says they confessed their sins. Verses 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, they prayed to God and asked Samuel to pray with them that God would deliver them from the Philistines. And God delivered them from the Philistines with a mighty distraction, a mighty voice, thunder, 
They were distracted and the Israelites won the battle and the Philistines never fought them again while Samuel was alive. The Bible says in Psalm 20, verse 7, some take pride in chariots, others in horses, but we take pride in the name of the Lord. We trust in the name of the Lord. So Israel got together at Mizpah, and there Samuel gathered the people together and said, Repent from your sins and repeat what God wants you to do, what he said all along. Worship him and him alone. The first commandment in the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And the Israelites realized that other gods, other idols before them, and they destroyed their Baals, they destroyed their Athros. Their Baal was a god of, 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 um, of grain, of, of crops, and their Athros were gods of fertility that would give them children. And they destroyed all those things. Today, in Memorial Day weekend of 2021, I'm calling on us to repent of our sins, to remember what God has done for us. One of the things that God often does is he says, do not forget, do not forget, do not forget, do not forget. When you forget of the blessings that God has given you, you begin to fall away from God. That's why we sing the songs, count your many blessings, name them one by one. Why? Because it's surprising to see what God has already done in our lives. Don't count on the chariots of men because God will deliver you. The Israelites had to turn from their sin, repent, tear down their idols, and God listened, and they were back in right relationship with God. Today, are there idols in your life that you need to tear down? We don't have graven images today. What we have are homes and cars and careers. We have families and relationships and they begin to be our idols. And this morning, we need to be like the children of Israel who gathered together and said, we repent of our sin. We turn back to God. And we will be his people. Jesus even went as far in the upper room to say, take this bread, take this juice, and in this bread and juice, remember me. Remember me. Every time we take the bread and the juice of the Lord's Supper, we remember the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it's important to God for us to remember what God has brought us through. And in 2021, Memorial Day, I want us to remember what God has brought us through. And what he has got brought us through is we're on the backside of this pandemic. Yes, many people have been sick, some have died, our lives have been upended, but I believe it is also a time that God is calling us to repentance, that God is calling us to return to Him. 
And God gave this idea to Samuel. And he poured out the water on a rock and said, this is the rock of remembrance. This is the rock of Ebenezer. And let me tell you what Ebenezer means. Ebenezer means stone of help. Stone of help. They commemorated the victory in verse number 12. They commemorated the victory in verse number 12. And he said, here's your Ebenezer. Remember what God has brought you through. Remember what this has led you to. Don't forget God. And today, on this Memorial Day weekend, and I know Memorial Day means many things. A lot of it means we remember those who have fallen and sacrificed for our great country. And I want to honor them as well. But also, I want to call us back to God and you have a rock in your hands that I want you to put somewhere that you can remind you that this is your Ebenezer. As that song says, here I raise my Ebenezer. Why? Because this is a stone of help. God has gotten us this far. He won't let us down anytime soon. He that has begun a good work in you will continue it until the day of Christ. 2020 is over. Thank God of that. We've had so many problems in 2020. In 2020, my brother died, my dad died, my sister-in-law died. For me, 2020 was an awful year. I didn't get the... the the, the flu, but it was still an awful year. 2020 hasn't worked out great, that great yet either, but I'm fully vaccinated, moving forward. God, who has brought me this far, will continue to bring me until I'm safely home. So today, on this Memorial weekend, I raise my Ebenezer and say, God, you are the stone of help. What you have done in the past and have gotten me to today, you will continue to do your work in my life. The Israelites would eventually go back to living in sin. Saul would become king Saul would be a man that was not after God's heart. They would fall back into sin. But the Ebenezer stone kept them in remembrance of what God had done so far. You know, the Ebenezer in J. Hudson Taylor who started the Inland Mission in, in China, wrote in the front of his building. He wrote that God, who has begun his good work, will continue it until we see him again. God, who began his work, will continue it until we see him again. And that is a true statement today, as it was back in 1906 when those words were written in China the first major influence of Christianity in China God who has started his work will continue it in us he raised his Ebenezer to say God has given us his direction his promise his love his salvation he has brought us this far and we raise our Ebenezer Samuel was not saying, hooray, we have arrived. What Samuel was doing was saying, yea, God has brought us so far, 
And as long as we continue with God, he will continue to bless with us. The Ebenezer doesn't mean that you've arrived. It's not the finish line. But it's a, a point along the way to remind us what God has done for us. So like Samuel poured water on the rock and called it Ebenezer, these rocks got pulled out of the new river and they are to help you, to remind you of our Ebenezer that God has brought us this far into 2021 and God will not let us down. Remember the words of 1 Chronicles chapter 7. Verse 14, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. This morning, our land needs to be healed. America is in dire straits and what we need is God's people to repent turn from their wicked ways we always want others to do it boy if those in Hollywood would just get right with God if those in Washington New York would just get right with God and God says if my people they're not his people we are. So it takes just a few of us to say, God, I remember you bring me through. I remember your faithfulness. I remember your love. I remember what you've done for us. And I will repent of my sins, get rid of my idols, and trust in you. <clears throat> so what must, what must we do? First off, we need to continue to rely on God. Continue to rely on God. When Israel became Ichabod, when the glory of the Lord departed, they stopped looking to God and started looking to the, the, the idols of the people around them. But the Lord God, creator of heaven and earth, cannot be contained. He cannot be put in the midst of other gods, they will collapse, as the Philistines learned. Zechariah says, not by might nor by power, but by spirit, says the Lord of hosts. We must rely on God for our victories. And second, we must continue to move forward. We must continue to move forward. God is not finished with us yet. This is not the finish line. This is only the beginning of what God has done for us. Let us continue to follow him. Put away our sin. Put away our idols. And trust in him. Pray. And realize God has brought us this far. Praise God he will bring us home. I don't know when that finish line will be for any of you. It could be today, it could be next week, it could be next year, it could be 50 years from now. I have no idea. But I want God to find me faithful. In what I'm doing, I want to raise my Ebenezer and say, God, help me. This is a stone of help. Help me to continue to follow you. Help me to continue to serve you. Help me continue to love you. Help me to continue to seek your face and turn from my ways. And Lord God, help us to heal our land. This is your Ebenezer. Keep it with you somewhere. Maybe put it on a dresser. Put it on a desk, an office, wherever that will help you remember God is your Ebenezer stone. And here you raise your Ebenezer to trust in God 
to keep you until that day we're reunited with him again. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for Samuel, and I thank you for his life. I thank you that he is our example this morning of raising our Ebenezer to be the type of, of Christian that will turn from our wicked ways, hear from heaven, and be, to be delivered. Lord, help our country, and may it begin in us that through our lives, people will see Christ in us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Three eleven is our hymn. Let Jesus come into your heart. We'll sing just the first verse. If you have something, it's starting to warm up a little bit, isn't it? Uh, let's stay and let's eat some food together and enjoy God's fellowship and company. And uh, don't remember, uh, don't forget your Ebenezer. God bless you. Have a great day. <laughs>